Study the circuit diagram and answer the questions. Try this on your own before you continue. Pause the movie until you've done this. Let's make sense of the circuit before we start answering the questions. The first thing we notice is that this is a parallel circuit. The first step in understanding a parallel circuit is to convert the circuit into its equivalent series circuit. How do we do that? We have to calculate the effective resistance of the parallel section so that we can replace the parallel section with a single resistor which is equivalent to the parallel section. We notice that in the circuit, one of the parallel branches has two resistors in series with one another. Because of that, we first need to replace these two resistors with a single resistor. It's very easy to calculate the equivalent resistance of resistors in series. We simply add their resistances. So we see here we have two 8 ohm resistors in series with one another in this branch. Their combined resistance is 8 plus 8 equals 16 ohms. So we have a 4 ohm resistor in parallel with a 16 ohm resistor. Now we need to replace this parallel section with a single resistor which has the same resistance as these two in parallel. How do we do that? Because there are only two resistors in parallel, we can make use of this equation. The effective resistance of the parallel section is equal to the product of the two resistors in parallel divided by their sum. Substitute values into this equation and find the effective resistance of the parallel section. R1 is 4 ohms. R2 is 16 ohms. 4 times 16 is 64. 4 plus 16 is 20. 64 divided by 20 is 3,2. So we can replace the 4 and 16 ohm resistors in parallel with a single resistor of resistance 3,2 ohm. Notice that the equivalent resistance is less than the smallest resistance of the parallel section. In this case, 3,2 is smaller than 4. That's that's because adding resistors in parallel always decreases overall resistance. Adding resistors in parallel is like making the pipe thicker. A thicker pipe lets the charges flow easier. In other words, makes less resistance. That's why the effective resistance of a parallel section must always be less than the lowest value resistance in the parallel section. We notice that the first question asks us to find the effective resistance of the circuit. So far, we've converted the parallel circuit into its equivalent series circuit. Now we need to find the total resistance of the circuit. It's easy to calculate the total resistance of a series circuit. Try to do this yourself first. We simply add the resistances of the resistors in the circuit. Now since the question said calculate the resistance of the circuit, we can include the battery internal resistance because it acts like any other resistor in series in the circuit and it is also part of the circuit. Circuit means circle, so it's part of the entire path the charges move along. So therefore the answer is 2 plus 3,2 plus 0,8 equals 6 ohms. If the question had rather said calculate the total resistance of the external circuit, then it would not include the battery's internal resistance. Then we would leave out 0,8 and the answer would be 2 plus 3,2 equals 5,2 ohm. Now we're asked what the ammeter reading is. We notice that the ammeter is in the main part of the circuit. That tells us that this ammeter measures I main, which we could also call I total, the total current passing through all points in the series circuit, or we could say rather in the series equivalent of the circuit. We know that the total circuit resistance is 6 ohms and the supply voltage, which could also be called V total, is 12 volts. And now we need to find I main. How can we do this? We know that this is the relationship between the following variables. Potential difference, also called voltage across, measured in volts. Resistance, measured in ohms. And current strength, measured in amperes. 
From this triangle, we know that I equals V over R. Current strength equals potential difference divided by resistance. When we apply this formula, it's important to make sure we are consistent between the variables. In this case, all our variables refer to the total values for the whole circuit, the total circuit resistance, the supply voltage, and I main. Now, if we take the supply voltage to be the EMF, 12 volts in this case, then we are taking the total circuit resistance to be the total circuit's resistance, in other words, including the battery internal resistance. So then it's these values that we must use to substitute into the equation, and then we find that I main is 2 amperes. Notice that we would get the same answer if we rather viewed the total resistance as being the total external circuit's resistance, which is 5,2 ohms. But then we must be consistent, and we must then use the terminal potential difference rather than the EMF, because we need to then consistently see the battery and the external circuit as separate from one another. So if we rather make use of the external circuit's resistance here, in other words, R equals 5,2 ohms, then we first need to calculate the terminal potential difference, which later on in the movie we're going to do, and we find it to be 10,4 volts. And then we make use of those two values to find I main, and it gives us the same answer, 10,4 volts divided by 5,2 ohms equals 2 amperes. Now we know that current strength is the same everywhere in a series circuit. It doesn't matter where we place an ammeter in a series circuit, it will read the same value anywhere. And that's because electrons, like marbles, are incompressible. Just like you can't make some of these marbles move faster than others in this marble circuit. Electrons in a series circuit flow at the same rate through all points in the circuit. In our process of making sense of the circuit, the next step for us to think about is the potential difference across the various resistors in the circuit. From this triangle, we know that V equals IR. Remember that when you apply this equation, it's important to be consistent. So for example, if you're calculating the potential difference across this 2 ohm resistor, make sure that you use I through this 2 ohm resistor and the resistance of this 2 ohm resistor. Everything must refer to this 2 ohm resistor. You must be consistent. So do these calculations yourself for each of the three resistors before you proceed with the movie. Since the current strength is the same at all points in a series circuit, I is 2 amperes through each of these resistors. For the 2 ohm resistor, V equals 2 amperes times 2 ohms equals 4 volts. For the 3,2 ohm effective resistor, V equals 2 amperes times 3,2 ohms equals 6,4 volts. The potential difference across the battery internal resistance is often called lost volts. And that equals 2 amperes multiplied by the battery internal resistance of 0, 0,8 ohms equals 1,6 volts. Remember that potential difference refers to the change in energy energy per coulomb of charge between two points. We can visualize a series circuit like this. Each blue circle represents a coulomb of charge. Imagine these charges moving around the circuit. Each red stripe represents a joule of electrical energy. The cell or battery gives charges energy as the charges move through it. As the charges move through a resistor, electrical energy is converted to other forms like heat and maybe light. This energy goes out of the circuit, reducing the amount of electrical energy the charges have. The charges return to the cell with zero energy per coulomb. So the voltage that the battery puts into the circuit must equal the voltage that the resistors take out of the circuit. Notice also that the more resistant resistor removes more voltage than the less resistant resistor. The more resistant resistor is more difficult for the charges to move through, so they lose more energy as they fight through it. The less resistant resistor is easier to move through, so the charges don't lose so much energy as they move through it. Notice that this is what is happening in the circuit. The battery puts in 12 volts. The resistors take out 4 volts plus 6,4 volts plus 1,6 volts. In other words, the resistors take out 
12 volts, just as much as what the battery put into the circuit. Or to be clearer, what the EMF of the battery put into the circuit. Also, notice that the highest potential difference is across the most resistant resistor in the circuit. And the lowest potential difference is across the smallest resistance. These things are ways that we use to help us to check that our potential difference calculations are correct.